G'day guys, Carlos from Abigail Travel, in the garage with the patrol, I'm pretty excited today, been waiting a while for these to arrive, the rock sliders, they are a sexy slider, kick outs, got the bump at the front, I'm excited about this, I don't know if you remember one of my earlier patrol videos, I said there's three things you need to go off road, mud tyres, bash plates, and rock sliders, then we'll see what this thing can really do, so we just had a quick talk with David Dash, a little bit of a pep talk on how to put these things on. Um, they do have some really good content, um, also online instructions, all that stuff. One thing he mentioned to me is it takes them three and a half hours on a hoist in the shop. Um, most people like me doing it on gross floor because it's an all-day affair. I set myself a challenge. I'm going to try and knock this over in about four hours. So, it's currently the time, 1.37. Oh, I am famous for distraction too, though. So, <laughs> we'll see if I get distracted along the way. One of the other things he did make mention too is passenger side is a lot harder to do. You've got HBMC in, in the way. So like a HBMC bash plate there that you've got to be careful, make sure you don't do the right bolts. Also, fuel tank, HBMC lines. So, logic would be start on the driver's side, but we'll have a look under it. It is a work of art, that slider. I need brackets. <laughs> Just cool ass. It's almost a shame that no one will ever see them brackets again. Anyway, let's get them out of the way. We'll get under it, we'll have a look. So, it is all CAD designed and plasma cut. But that is one sexy slider. We went with the tops. Actually, one thing I do love about these two, which I will point out, is it's actually a slightly angled slider. But the top is perfectly flat. So like design wise, that is a cool feature because I love the angled slider look. But angled tops look silly. And I know what you're thinking, just don't get tops. And I had that thought with my last set of sliders. The whole idea of rock sliders is they protect your seals. What actually happened with my last sliders? I always used to flick sticks up, they'd hit the bar and then they'd actually get jammed in between the slider and the seal. Whilst I never had any rock damage, I still had seal damage, which really annoyed me because I was trying to protect that. And I also do love, instead of going with a checker top, it's a nice smooth top. Keeps to the nice clean lines. Nothing also. I can pick that up one hand. Don't get me wrong, it's heavy. But it's not as heavy as you think it is. Um, I actually just jumped on the Dash Off-Road website. Just gonna have a quick look at the instructions. Safety glasses, because obviously I just came back from Fraser, so I've still got sand and shit falling out front of the car. Gonna keep the iPad with me. But... And uh, let's get under here and have a look. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove the factory stubs first. Um, Couple of bolts, obviously any bolts you pull out that leaves an exposed hole, we'll put them back in place. Then we'll get into the fun part of trying to work out which bolts not to touch on the HBMC units. But in all honesty, they're all marked on the Dash Off Road instructions, so make sure you read them, because I hear this is an expensive mistake. I also whacked my car up on uh, my couple of blocks of wood as well, just to give it a little bit more clearance under here. Pro tip, top bolt first, and then that way. You can stay out from under it whilst you rattle the bottom bolt off. And then when you rattle that off, the factory step won't smack you in the face. <laughs> Let's see what happens. See? Pro tip. So the seal on the patrol, you've actually got the bottom of the door and then like under the cap. So HBMC, that bolt, that bolt, just holds the cover on. Obviously crawl under, have a good look. Apparently there's a third bolt up there. We'll get these two off and then we'll have a look at it and verify it. HBNC unit, that bolt, that bolt, the that bolt. I will triple check this because <laughs> I don't want to stuff this up. Wish me luck. But in all seriousness, I have triple checked this. In all honesty, if you stuff this up, accept that it's going to cost you money. There's a lot going on on this HBNC bank. So, my advice, definitely triple check the instructions because I can see how it could be easily stuffed up. Um, obviously be careful too, because you don't want to break any of these lines. of brackets for the fuel tank bash guard. So we're going to remove them. I can only assume that's just to pry that over a little bit to be able to get our um, slider mounting where it needs to be. So we'll get them out. No HBMC oil on the ground, so let's uh, get the big jack and we'll lift this into place. Of course, doing anything like this, just be careful you're not smashing anything whilst trying to position it, jack it into place. Because that's the risk with using a mechanical aid to lift it in. That feels a bit right though. Yeah, well that seems okay. That is a tidy slider. Then we'll just double check it all. Make sure we haven't mechanically smashed anything in our way. 
and uh, then we'll bolder on. So anything that uses these captive nuts, I'm of the opinion, pay someone to install it. <laughs> this is the front of the uh, slider. M10 hex bolt, let me go through there. We'll get this roughly where it needs to be. We'll loosely fit that, and then we'll work the rest of it out. So, cross member, mount, hole in chassis. So we'll get it through one of them. I don't know if you see it, we'll get through one of them holes there, and then we'll push it down, get it to where we need, and then we'll loosely fit this bolt. One bolt down. <laughs> We're going good. Another pro tip. One of these, a couple of these captive nuts has slightly longer tails. Not much, but it's like an inch. The ones with the slightly longer tails, save them for the front because you'll need the length for the front. This, this bit's a cruel joke. <laughs> it brackets it's nice with a HBMC unit. Now, <laughs> that's our bolt hole there. That is the entrance for our captive nut. We're gonna get our captive nut through there and then put the stud through there. Why you can't see it. <laughs> That's not gonna be hard at all. So it took me a second to come up with something. So I can see this hole in the chassis. That hole there is where the captive nut fits through. So I'll get a bit of dental floss on this. I can actually get off, put the stud in through this hole. So I'll get the stud to poke through this hole. I'll put wrap the dental floss around it, tie it up to it. And then I'll pull this wire with the dental floss tied to it. It'll pull the floss through. And then with a little bit of luck, I'm hoping I'll be able to pull the stud through with the floss. Come on, you son of a bitch. <laughs> yes! <laughs> now, before the fucking nut, before I drop this. Dental floss. Mint flavoured dental floss. <laughs> you can see the bolt up there, you can still see the floss attached to it. Because that stud's actually quite a tight fit in there. It is frustrating as hell, so just take your time. Um, obviously the more angry you get, the harder it becomes. So my timing's taking a little bit of a hit. I had to go and get some hose for the bolts. The guy at the top of the chassis. Then I decided to go and get a couple more beers. I feel this new stuff. Don't know if it's going to be any good, but we'll give it a go. This is why jobs take me so long. So as you can see, I've precision marked out the HBMC bracket. Now we're on the cutting disc through it. And we'll just cut it to make it fit around the uh, slider bracket. So precision cut. <laughs> We'll uh, just touch up the edges with a bit of paint so it doesn't rust and uh, bolt it back in. We survived. HBMC, no oil. We'll get the cover back on it. So the heat shield for the exhaust, I just undid the bolts for that and drop that down. And that will make it easier. So the U-bracket bolts. One thing, there is a couple of lines running across the top of the chassis. All right, so getting the driver's side done. Um, <laughs> yes, I've done this ask about face. And I intentionally did that backwards because after doing a dive and finding out the passenger side was hard, I went, you know what, let's get the hardest one done, and then hopefully the uh, other side will be quicker. So, time-wise, we're getting there. <laughs> I will say, I did go and buy beer, I wasted, I wasted probably an hour in the middle there. So, this bracket here, unclip that. Well, that's a plastic cover. Pull this bracket off, which was holding this plug up the other way, and uh, we'll lift the slider into place. We'll start bolting it all together. Well, that was actually surprisingly easy to get on. Just leave that loose. <laughs> oh, I wish I thought of that earlier. That bracket there, 
put the pry bar up, just bent it off the chassis. So that goes clearance of the bolt. Front bolt would have rubbed against the HBMC line and naturally you would have got a hole in it. Now we just get this attached. We'll pry it forward, which is gonna be a bit of pain, but I've got an idea. And Bob's your uncle, do them all up, we're done. If you've never seen this done, you're in for a treat. <laughs> it so that'll just hold the nut in the spanner so I'm gonna drill a pilot hole I'm using a 6.5 and then obviously I'll drill it out to 10 realistically a 45 like a compact drill would be the go for this but I don't have a compact drill so just work with what we got now we just tighten all these bolts up pulled it tight so Get these two tighten up, get the back tighten up. Then we're done. So uh, this is not difficult at all. Get a 16 ring spanner, 15 ring spanner, and uh, tighten these couple of bolts up. I don't know what they chose to fit these, but I reckon it'd be worth it. Uh, what are we gonna do? Just gonna zip tie a few wires up out of the way now. This plug here, a bit of room on it. You zip it up to that HBMC line, and hopefully that just sits up out of the way. Righto, eight o'clock, got it done. I reckon I probably had maybe an hour and a half, two hours of stuffing around as well. By the time I went and got some hose and spent time talking to Kel, cooked dinner, things like that. Just, just wasted time not working on it. That is on the bar, that's on the bracket, yeah, that's... Jacks are on the end of puff, but you can see that definitely could handle jacking off them. Oh, lucky I didn't check my roof measurements. That is a sexy slider. So it's been a few days now since I've installed these. A few things I want to show you. When you look down the side of the car, it looks like you've only got the tube bar. With the design of the sills of the Nissan, you've actually got a little bit of step. But quite easy to stand on. That's still that's the narrower section. Still easy to stand on it. Don't feel like you're gonna slip off it. And then with the kick out, so this is sort of what's cool. Obviously gives you more step, but the rear, easy to stand on. Because of the design and the way the door goes down, you can actually still quite easily stand on it with the door closed. For me, I'd say allow yourself five to six hours to do this job. On the passenger side where the U brackets go above the chassis and you've got like the brake lines, I think they're brake lines. Um, you need two little lengths of hose. So make sure you got the hose first. So where this front bracket bolts through the body mount, um, you don't have a lot of space. So you will need a 45 degree drill. So organize yourself an angle drill and that way you're right to go to drill them couple of holes at the front mount. With the back mount, use the dental floss trick. But other than that, I think they're a good thing. Um, love the design, love the look. Put the jack under already and lifted the weight of the cars. I just think they're a good looking bit of gear. Another thing that I would love about these two is dash off road guarantee. You bend them, they'll resend them. So basically, if you manage to wreck one of these, they'll give you another one. So they've got to be confident that they're okay. But in all honesty, I believe they're strong. After seeing the jack hanging off the very edge of it and taking the weight of the car, I don't think you'll actually bend them. I don't think you can do it. <laughs> so anyway, that's my dash off road rock sliders. The big O Deluxe, I believe they're called. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions, so feel free to comment whatever below. If you like what you see, feel free to subscribe. And until next time, guys, go travel.